Hey guys, welcome to another video. In this video, we'll be studying about the paper pattern and the tips and tricks you could use to your advantage in the chemistry boards of 2023 ICAC. So let's start. So first of all, uh, as usual, I'll start with the paper pattern of the chemistry board paper. So basically, there are two sections. Uh, each section is of 40 marks and uh, all in all, the entire paper is of 80 marks. In each section, we have... Uh, so in section A, we have question number one which is of uh, 15 marks. It is a 15 question series, each of each question is of one mark. So all in all, it is of 15 marks. And then we have question number two, which consists of uh, around five questions, uh, five sub questions in total. And each question is of five marks each. So five fives are 25. So all in all, 25 plus 15, section A is of 40 marks. In question number two, we have various categories of sub questions, such as diagrammatic based questions, we have masked the following, we have FIB as in fill in the blanks and we have a uh, draw the structural formula. We have a sub question, the fifth sub question which is entirely dedicated to organic chemistry. In section B, uh, we have an option, attempt any four questions. So all in all there are six questions in section B. In section A there are two questions and you have to attempt all, uh, all of them, uh, both of them. In section B we can attempt any four questions. Now, in, uh, unlike in geography and history, wherein each question has a separate dedicated chapter to it, to it as in that uh, each question that is listed in section B or section C, uh, there is an individual chapter that is dedicated to each question. But unlike, as I said before, unlike in uh, ge geography and history, chemistry, in chemistry, the questions in section B, there's not a chapter dedicated to each question. Uh, it's a mix of all chapters. So say, for example, if I read out question number three, we have identified the anion present in each of the following compounds. So there is a certain compound which will be presented to us. When barium chloride solution is added to a solution of compound B, a white precipitate and soluble in dilute hydrochloric acid is formed. So there is a certain, uh, you could say, a white precipitate is formed and you have to name the anion in that white, white precipitate. In the second one, we have write the products and balance the equation. So we have sulfur plus concentrated nitric acid and we have to give the product and the balanced equation of the entire equation. In the third one, we have a sub-question that is dedicated to periodic uh, properties. So arrange the following as per the instructions given in the brackets. So we have sodium, potassium, chlorine, uh, silicon and sulfur. So this is the question number three, a uh, third sub-question and a sub-question of the third sub-question. Uh, Na, K, Cl, uh, silicon, sulfur and in the brackets on the right we have increasing order of electronegativity. So basically there are sub-questions that are dedicated to certain chapters but the entire question as a whole, if we take the entire question as a whole, so there is a mix of all chapters in one question. Similarly, if I read out question number 4, we have for each of the substances given below, what is the role played in the extraction of aluminium? Now extraction of aluminium is a process that is covered in metallurgy. So, in the first sub-question of question number 4, we can uh, comfortably we can comfortably say that the first sub-question is dedicated entirely to the process of aluminium, the process of extraction of aluminium. The second sub-question, calculate a gas cylinder filled with hydrogen and it holds 5 grams of gas. So, this is a, a sub-question that is dedicated to the gas laws. And in the B sub-question of the second uh, sub-question, Give the empirical formula of CS3COH. So this is a sub-question which is dedicated to organic chemistry. So as I've said before, each sub-question has a de separate dedicated chapter to it. But if you look at the question as a whole, uh, it covers a wide range of all chapters into one question. So all in all, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So we have around 6 questions of which you can attempt any 4 questions. So and section B is of 40 marks. So you have section A which is of 40 marks, section B which is of 40 marks. All in all it is an 80 mark board paper of chemistry 2023 which is of ICSC board. Now this is the end of the general paper pattern of the uh, chemistry board exam. This is and uh, the document that I am referring to is the specimen paper of the chemistry uh, board exam. The link to this uh, copy will be provided into the description box, box below so you could refer that uh, online copy, download it and refer to all the questions that I am uh, explaining right now. So this is the end of the general paper pattern. Now let's move on to the tips and tricks that you could use to your advantage in the board paper. So let's move on. Now the first tip and uh, the first uh, tip or trick: remember properties of gases used in preparations of uh, acids, right, or the extraction of aluminium. So there are certain uh, properties of uh, various products, or you could say uh, majority of them are gases. You have to remember their smell, color, 
or their alkaline or acidic in nature. So if I quote a question from the specimen paper, question number two, sub question one, the diagram, the diagram based question. The diagram shows an experiment set up for the laboratory preparation of a pungent smelling gas. A. Name the gas collected in the gas jar. Now, if you look at the question title in itself, and if you go to the last sentence of the question, the gas is alkaline in nature. And so this is clue number one and a laboratory preparation of a pungent smelling gas. So if you're familiar with the general property of this certain gas, you could comfortably or you could easily say that this is ammonia if you're familiar with the properties. So this is a very important trick that you should remember. So let's move on to the second step. Study organic compounds carefully and understand as it is a major chapter in 11th, 11th and 12th standard. Now, what I've observed in, uh, you know, what a practice that many of my friends make is that they do not understand organic chemistry as thoroughly as they should. Now, what I mean by the statement is that say, for example, you have the IUPAC nomenclature and the overall structural, structural formula of uh, various functional groups, etc that constitutes the basic foundations of organic chemistry in 11th and especially 12th. Or if you're, uh, for, if you're pursuing, uh, if you want to make a career in chemical engineering, organic chemistry, the fundamentals that you will learn in 10th will constitute the basic foundation, a strong foundation for chemistry, for studying chemistry ahead. And what a foolish mistake that many uh, people make is that they only study the, uh, say for example, de definitions such as catenation right now there's nothing wrong with learning definitions in any chapter whatsoever but the problem is that if you skip this chapter entirely in the hopes that you know if this question comes i can skip it and i'll maybe lose a mark or two but it doesn't matter as i've studied the rest of the chapters carefully it doesn't really work that way because this is a temporary short term uh, what i call a short term thinking the long term long term thinking should be that it doesn't matter if i get good marks in 10th right right what matters is that if I learn the fundamentals carefully in 10th standard itself, so I would encounter less number of obstacles while learning organic chemistry or revising through it when I'm in 11th standard. So if you have skipped over organic chemistry and you've just done the general, uh, you know, what you call definition memorization, basic definition memorization in 10th standard organic chemistry, you would encounter and just skip over the IUPAC nomenclature of the uh, entire organic chemistry series in uh, 10th then you would encounter a lot of obstacles while revising or uh, while revising or fully going through the uh, each para or each page of organic chemistry in 11th as well as 12th standard. Okay, so that's a second step. Moving on to the next step. Memorize the use of certain substances added into or a part of the preparation of various gases and acids. Now, what I mean by this step is, this step is pretty vague, but what I mean by this step is that certain substances that are added to a reaction. So say for example, we have drying agents which are added to the reaction, we have a catalyst that is added to the reaction and we have a promoter that is added to a reaction. And the problem is that if you don't remember certain, so say for example, we have the preparation of HCl, we have the preparation of nitric acid, ammonia, H2SO4, and there are certain substances in this and from the cate categories, as I said before, you have the drying agent, catalyst and uh, promoter. And if you fail to memorize these uh, terms, right? So say, for example, you have, if I quote from the question paper, the specimen paper. So if you go to section A, question number one, the eighth sub question, drying agent used to dry hydrogen chloride gas. Now, if you don't know, or if you haven't memorized this part quite well, then you wouldn't be able to answer this question and you would lose one mark, right? Now, what you would be wondering right now is that one mark, like it doesn't mean that much, does it? Now, if you move on to the ninth question, again, they've asked, but a separate uh, question, the catalyst used in the Haber's process is. Now, this is entirely another process, right? But the tip applies in both the cases. Right, so in the first case or in the eighth question, they've asked the drying agent. It doesn't matter that they've asked uh, about separate processes. What matters is that they've asked about the drying agent and they've asked about the catalyst. Right, in these cases, if you haven't memorized the catalyst and the drying agent as uh, thoroughly as you should have, then you would have lost two marks. Okay, let's move on to the next step. Solve numericals of gas laws. Now, this is a very important point. So a lot of people face many difficulties in uh, solving gas laws right so there's a definition part right there's a definition part in each 
and every chapter that you would do in chemistry, right? And people don't find any difficulties in memorizing those definitions. But the problem arises when they encounter the logic, logical part of the entire chapter. And gas laws is one of those chapters which is 20% definitions. So you have the Avogadro's law, you have the uh, gay sachs law, etc. They have no problem, the students have no problem in memorizing the definitions. But the main problem comes when they encounter the rest of the 80%, which is numericals. Now the only way to solve this problem is to repeatedly do the numericals. All the numericals that are listed in the textbook as well as solving problems on the internet. There are no shortage of uh, practice questions that are listed on the internet. You could make a simple search and solve all the question questions li listed in various educational websites. So let's move on to our next tip. The next tip is learn collection of gases in the preparation of uh, various acids. Right. So what I mean by this tip is that say for example, uh, if I refer to the preparation of ammonia, the collection of ammonia gas, that is the product, ammonia gas is collected by the downward displacement of air. Now, this is a very important point as it mentions the collection of gases. So, if say for example, in this case, I've referred to the gas ammonia being collected by the downward displacement of air. In the case of the preparation of HCl, the, if I refer to the collection of HCl gas, it is collected by the upward displacement of air. So, in the case of ammonia, ammonia gas was collected by the downward displacement of air and HCl gas or vapors were collected by the upward displacement of air. So the collection of gases as a product is very important to memorize. Okay, so let's move on to our next step. The next step is reasons for the setting of the apparatus. Now what I mean by this point is that why is the apparatus structured in that certain way or why is the apparatus or why is the flask to be specific, why is it made out of glass? And what I mean by the statement is, if you refer to the specimen paper, if you go to question number four, sub question four, and if you look at the que uh, sub question B and C, right, an inverted funnel is used to dissolve HCl gas in water. Now, this is a structural question that pinpoints to the setting of the apparatus. Why is the inverted funnel? Why is the funnel inverted in that way to dissolve HCl gas in water? Or if you refer to the C sub question, all apparatus made of glass is used in the laboratory preparation of nitric acid. Right. Now, if you know the reason for the setting of that apparatus, right, if you know why is it, uh, why is the entire apparatus in the case of nitric acid uh, made of glass? Now, why is it made out of glass? It's because nitric acid is corrosive. Right. It attacks any, so say for example, if any part of the uh, entire structure is made of cork, or is it if it is made out of rubber? So. HNO3 vapors being extremely corrosive, they would attack that substance, right? And glass neutralizes this phenomena, right? That's why the entire apparatus or the entire setting of the apparatus is made of glass. If you are not, if you haven't memorized or are not familiar with this reason, then you would lose two marks immediately. So if you look at the sub question four, right? It is of three marks and you've already lost two marks if and only if you haven't made yourself familiar with the reasons. Or the setting of the apparatus. Okay, so let's move on to the next step. We have learn examples of various categories. Now, what I mean by this is, example, strong electrolytes, non-polar covalent bonds, basic, basic compounds, etc. It is very important to learn what exactly are coordinate bonds. What exactly is meant by an alkaline nature of an of a compound. Right, what exactly is an electrolyte? But it is equally important to memorize what are the examples. Because, say for example, if you refer to E sub question of the fourth sub question of question number two, section A, the bond formed by shared pair of electrons with both electrons coming from the same atom. Like, this is a coordinate bond. Okay, but say for example, say for example, in the later parts of the specimen paper or in your board paper, if you are not familiar with the Say, for example, an example of coordinate bond, right? You have listed the definition, but you haven't mentioned the example of the coordinate bond, which in this case is ammonia, right? So you would maybe lose marks, right? And if you talk about, say, for example, strong electrolytes, right? Now, there's a question in the specimen paper that refers to exactly this. If you go to question number eight, the third sub question, name the particles present in strong electrolyte, weak electrolyte, and non-electrolyte. Right. If you are not familiar with the particles present in each types of these electrolytes, then you would find it hard to answer these questions. 
so it is very important to learn examples of various categories right so, such as dehydrating dehydrating agents oxidizing agents reducing agents uh, coordinate bonds ionic compounds uh, polar covalent bonds etc so that brings us to the end of the video uh, i hope you enjoyed and learned something from this video and also hope that you would apply all of these tips and tricks in your exam and uh, it would certainly fill me with uh, immense pleasure to see you scoring higher marks than usual and getting good grades in the final chemistry board paper so i'll see you in the next video bye bye take care